Hey, welcome to Creative Current, coming to you from downtown Los Angeles in the artist space in the Arts District. We have a really special show today. Um, we have Tawny Ellis and Gio uh, Loria. Tawny uh, has been part of the uh, art scene in, in, in the Arts District for many years. Actually, she's sort of provided the soundtrack for a lot of what's happened down here. And uh, recently, she's, uh, she and Gio have uh, produced a new album, ITU. Is that, is that right? Um, a lot of which was recorded in France, so we're going to talk about that a little bit, talk about uh, the background of this excellent uh, uh, duo. Um, now you're, you're from Savannah, and, um, and your music in the past has sort of had a, a very strong country influence, although I don't think of it as country any more than I think of Neil Young as country. But, um, Good point. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah would, uh, what about your musical roots in Savannah? Tell us a little bit about that. You know, I think, um, I think it comes from my, my father, and um, he would listen to a lot of, um, uh, you know, Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings. And um, so my house, I didn't get a lot of <laughs> rock and roll or anything like that until later on. Uh -huh. Also, he was in the Air Force, so when we moved to um, Utah, we were put out way out in the country, and we only got a couple of stations, and that being exactly that. So um, it took me a while to get back around to it, because I would experiment in a lot of different kinds of music, but that is what is the what? most natural to me. But it's not necessarily, you know, I, I, don't, I don't say, hey, I'm making country I think it's an influence, and there's a, there's some roots there, but it's it just is like what, Americana. It, it's folk, it's what you know, you well, know the, the album everything that I before this before this one, Evolve or Die, it's very was country. very American. It had really those sort yeah. of Patsy Cline connected mm -hmm. roots, and you know, yeah. a lot of a lot of old traditional American. I mean, like Train and these sorts of things that mm -hmm. are a little bit blue, a little bit of blues. Yeah. And um, this album, mm -hmm. though, is much broader. Uh, yeah. Both, both in its concept and in, in its depth, and it seems to come from a lot of other places. Well, I, as a as a independent artist starting out in LA, really finding my voice and getting out and doing my own songwriting and performing, and um, it, it's very singer songwriter <laughs> based um, with all of those influences on on it. So. You know, I started out that way, kind of went a little more rock and different things, but I actually s produced this album with Gio, and it's the first time I've really taken that position. And I was really adamant about making it a record that really reflected me as an artist uh, fully and truly. And um, so it, it was kind of a feat to do that because I'm very much into simplicity. I like a lot of space, a lot of open space, a lot of, it, you know, it's more sculptural. I'm also a sculptor. I, I really hear music on a sculptural vibe. Well, so open space and planes really works for me. A lot of, uh, in a lot of reviews, I see the word minimalist. And it, yeah. always, it always surprises me because I think it's both misleading and incredibly apt. Mm. Because you have this presence and you have this voice. And I, by the way, the, the two. Did you know when you were uh, how long? How young were you when you started singing, and before you rec recognized <laughs> that you had the style? Um, the earliest I remember is um, singing in the hallway, which had incredible acoustics. When I was in probably the second grade, I don't know how old you are when you're in the second grade. You? Five, <laughs> five or six. Anyway, yeah. I'm so I was singing. Um, I think I was singing the Lord's Prayer. And um, my father came in and he said, I thought I heard an angel singing in here. <laughs> and I said, no, no, that was me, you know. And um, I think I was really technically singing then because I was so moved by what I had heard. I don't know who I heard singing it. Or, or, but um, I was so into the voice and just the technicality and the tone. And it's such an early age. So I mean, I remember. Being, and then we moved to, out to Utah, and I, I would sit around and write songs about my dogs and my cats. <laughs> and, you know, uh, um, I was really into it. Well, one of the great things Young. I think about your music is not just the technical aspects, which, which, which it's great to see it growing and changing over mm -hmm. the years, and especially what and I think is really flowering in the, in, in the, 
last album, but uh, the fact that you put so much of yourself into your music. I mean, you you talked to me a little bit the <laughs> other day about the feeling, you know, that you really have to be in that song. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that, that, uh, that that's really remarkable about what you do. What Thank is that you. process like? Um, when you write, or, for example. You know, I, writing comes to me like, it'll literally be like I'll just be walking across the living room and I'll just hear a melody and the words will come to me. Um, other times, you know, we'll just be like messing around with the guitar and here's a riff and I'll just start singing something. I mean, there's a lot of different ways, but it does come from a lot of journaling. And when I say journaling, it's not just my personal experiences. And so the album's not my personal experience. It's more like um, a collective of I see behaviors. I might be really amazed at something that I see that happens in human relationships. You know, and I see that in many different relationships. And I sort of bring them together and write a song about that behavior that I see and make it very personal as if I had lived it. Um, so it's not necessarily my, but it's my observation of, I love studying that kind of stuff. The emotion, it, you know, I think that that is what people tap into is there's an emotional content. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and it really, it, it, I mean, that I think is what people really get out of the concert. Yeah. They recognize that you have a connection with it, and then it's so easy to connect with the audience. It's a passionate, it's a passionate endeavor. <laughs> Speaking of passion, how did you guys get together? Where did you find each other? <laughs> wow. Um, the LA art scene, music scene, really. We were sort of um, showed up at some crazy party on a full moon night where they were having a drum circle, and you know we. Yeah. We, we were introduced to each other because, um, you know, we had a mutual friend um, that night. It, so. was a, it was a little awkward because uh, there was an artist, a local artist in the scene, and she wanted to paint a portrait of me. And it was like, from what I can remember, it was seemed like 10, 12 feet tall, and it was really it big. It really was. It was and a I beautiful had my upright painting. Base. So I had my upright bass and this crazy black sparkle hat I always used to wear. I have tons of hats. And I'm playing my bass, and it's there in the studio. And everybody's there. Uh, he had been. He he came in the room, but I had seen the painting. So that's what's so funny is that I was there working on some sculpture in that space at some point, and I saw the painting. So I knew what he looked like, and I knew he was a bass player. And I was like, "All right, whatever." And then at the party, my our friend was like, "Hey, this is," and so it was like really brief. And then he was actually going to do. You know, to play music, we were all going to play. It was a really strange so night. We reconnected, so we reconnected <laughs> a few weeks later, and we got together. It was a few months later. All right, a few months later. My ex-bass player, it was his ex-roommate, and I, we were having a rehearsal, mm -hmm. and Gio came over to the house to do something, and I was like, hey, I know you. And I had just moved out of that house. I just bought a house in Echo Park, one of those huge old Victorians, uh -huh. and it was trash. It had, like, no windows in it and plywood on the front door, but it was, right. it was big. We were going to build a recording studio. So yeah. I said, hey, so at that rehearsal, I said, hey, come over, check out my house. Let's go get something to eat or whatever. And she said, okay. So we had this connection because we had met. And um, we went to the house. And I showed her the house. And there was no electricity on. I lit some candles and said, this is going to be the recording studio. And there's this great view of we downtown. We actually wrote I, the first song. And that ended up being the album that we released in 2006 called Shelter. Mm -hmm. We wrote that song. Yeah. That night. That night. Oh, wow. The first night we actually hung mm -hmm. out. We sat in the studio. We had a little handheld recorder and candles, and we sat on the floor and played. And I remember leaving around 5.30 in the morning, and, and I, we, you know, I think it was, I don't know, I don't even know if I had a cell phone back then. This was like 10 years ago. And, um, and he's like, I'm like, here's my number. And he said, OK. And he, he writes it down on something on a the piece wall. Of dry, no, it's a big piece he, of drywall. But we to wrote give me it like his in a sharpie number, on drywall. He gets this, he grabs this big <laughs> piece of drywall and writes his number. So I'm like, so I take the, I, I go home and I'm like, I got this big piece of drywall with this guy's phone number on it. Because we were just <laughs> destroying the house and rebuilding in the studio and the whole thing. So, it was a mess. And then, of course, he didn't call me for right away. Like a week or two. I called him. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. uh, I pulled out the drywall well piece. Well done. We were in construction. <laughs> well done. Well, well I got to say, it's been a remarkable musical collaboration ever since Thank then. You. Uh, <laughs> because the two of you seem to mesh so well together. 
Um, not, <laughs> not only, uh, uh, I mean, on stage, well. but no, the, the, you know, and, and um, Geo has is, is been uh, praised uh, by the critics as being a musician's musician, which I always think is somebody like Ry Cooter is great mm -hmm. praise. Uh, uh, but I'm not quite sure what it means. Um, but I, but I do know uh, the thing that that I like about it is that you play the bass with your feet, <laughs> and uh, I know we at a recent uh, a recent show uh, somebody sat down next to me and said it's driving me nuts. He said I, I there's four people up there on the stage with me, and I I know I can hear a bass line, but I can't see it. And I said, well, <laughs> look, that guy's not wearing any shoes. He's playing the pedals with his feet, <laughs> and. Uh, so, uh, so that I mean, you, but you all, but you're obviously um, uh, a master of many instruments. He can go, go like this and like <laughs> this at the same time. <laughs> uh. So, how do you guys work together? How do you, 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 you? So many millions of different ways. I mean, there's so many different ways we work together. Well, let's talk a little bit about the last album, which is really intriguing to me because you recorded it in a farmhouse in France on your laptop. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how you got to France and how you. How well, you we uh, we basically brought I brought a suitcase full of microphones and cables and some of the basic stuff we would need to do there and the laptop. It was definitely a plan. Yeah. And we had already had a bunch of songs written and some of them were written there, but we have a really good um, a couple that are really good friends mm -hmm. that they sort of. They're expats. <laughs> yeah. They own. They went and bought some gorgeous property there, and um, they said, "Why don't you guys come?" And so we kind of organized our lives so we could be gone for a little while, and um, we set up. We actually experimented in a couple different places there. They have a, what they call it the wine cove mm -hmm. underneath the basement. It's like a four hundred year old house. So um, all stone. All wow. stone. Stone walls with it. There was a cave that goes to the other house, like I guess in the war, they had these emergency exits. Yeah. There was this cave that we kind of had this reverb chamber working through this cave that would go to the other house yeah, yeah. that was partially filled and closed at so some the, point. But the natural open. acoustics were insane. And then we moved over to, to the, the, barn. the barn and an did some barn. stuff in there. And most of the song, most of the record, there, I'd say probably all of the songs, there is an element of the live take. Mm -hmm. If it's the local, or the guitar, or, or, or even the cajon on whiskey, we, we kept the integrity of that. If we, we came back so to also, L.A. and Also note did that we, we didn't take any instruments. Yeah. We took the recording gear and just figured we'd get there and we would figure it out. Like we would find the instruments. So we flew into Barcelona because we wanted to go to Barcelona. And our friends drove down and met us there. And we stayed in Barcelona for a little while. And the first night we went out in Barcelona, we were walking down, like Barcelona's got all these little alleyways and caves down in the Gothic Corridor. It's really old, really cool, and there's tons of bars and art and restaurants and stuff. And we're walking through, and we saw this little box. It looked like a really cool, funky piece of furniture. And we're like, what is that? And it was out in the alley. And Tawny goes, it's a cajon. And we were, and I, I kept saying on the way over there, I'm like, Maybe we could find a cajon what somewhere. Is, what is a cajon? It's a, it's it's a, a box, box with a hole in it. And it's so it has different sounds on each side. There's like a bass it's drum sound on one side. It's what our drummer was playing the oh, other yeah. night. One side has like he rivets was in it, so it sounds like yeah. a hi-hat kind of other sound. Sounds you can like sit on it and play it. She or... got a lot, of, a lot of sounds out of it. So we, so she, so we all saw it, and she realized it was a cajon because it was all painted black, and there's Bob Marley stickers on it, and it was really really old and funky. And there was a shaker, a really cool shaker. And this art, the, the guy who owned the art gallery, he walks out at the same time, and we're like, what's up, what's with this stuff? And he said... Oh, a guy was here. He's he's gone. We don't have any space it for it. Just take it. Take it. Take it. And we're take like, it oh my God, we have a cajon <laughs> and a shaker. So we found the cajon. <laughs> we found the shaker, and then through the culture, like the culture in Spain down there, there's these guys that play flamenco guitar all over the streets. Right. So they're like everywhere you go, especially at night, you'll be in these That's beautiful so awesome. areas. And we were we were actually eating dinner, the four of us, and there was this church right behind us, and it was like this weird little beautiful like piazza. And um, some of the guys came up and played. They were playing guitar. And we we're like, oh, that's great. And we said, oh, yeah, we're musicians too. And they said, oh, why don't you come over and play some music when you guys are done? We said, all right. So we bought a bottle of wine after, brought a bottle from the restaurant. 
sat down and they were playing flamenco and then they said in front of like you know a 700 year old church or something I don't and we started playing like some like country western stuff and they got the biggest kick out of it like they thought it was so they're they're doing you know they were just having a blast and some of them were trying to play along with us and play all this cool funky like country stuff but they were all flamenco based so we were so inspired through that trip that after a couple of nights of that, of seeing it and they and did that gypsy them, kind of flamenco. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. I was like, I've got to get one of these, one of these guitars. Yeah. So I said, I have to get a nylon string guitar. So one day I just walked out into the city. I did some research on my phone and found some places where they were making these guitars and just went out and played a bunch of them and found one and found a great like Barcelona made, beautiful handmade Spanish guitar, got a case for it and a book on like how to play flamenco guitar put it on my shoulder, <laughs> and just like walk back. I was gone for like eight hours. So in that day. one night, like, uh, so well, we, in a couple of days, we have all these, and our friends had, dri they drove down from their house in the south, south of France Earth. to Barcelona, and so it's like this kind of small car. <laughs> <laughs> Little Fiat, you've got all these. Yeah. Here we yeah. are, like, we're literally <laughs> the, the whole yeah. way. Yeah. Like and then the new guitar. Five hour trip, and I've got you know his <laughs> guitar Literally. case in my hand, and like <laughs> the cone, and, <laughs> and like luggage because we were there. For luggage on my while. lap. I'm like. <laughs> We were literally all packed into their car. We drove like six hours back up to the south of France. So did you have anybody else performing, or is it just the two of you with the instruments on the... It was uh, just the two of us. Lance sat in with us a couple of times, played percussion and stuff. And he, he we had a lot of experimenting but going on, but... Now, almost every song on this album is yours, except, uh, I think, Another Cup of Coffee, right? Uh, which, which is one of my favorite songs. And Mine actually, too. Actually, I went and listened to that, to your version, and listened to the White Stripes version. I actually like your version. Oh! Did it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but... The White every good idea we have, but see, has. But see, yeah, it's, be it's because you own your songs, no matter yeah. whether you write it or wow. it comes from someplace I, else. I will so only really cover a song, song that I feel like I can own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that song, I loved it so deeply when I first heard it and it took me a minute to really get under the skin of it and yeah. make it my own and and um, but the funny thing is is because Scarlett Rivera who played on the original with Bob Dylan yeah. she plays with us oh wow the violin player that played at our we have a video of our release record release show that's the original violin player that played with Bob so and she told me she said you know Bob was in the south of France hanging out with the gypsies in the mountains Right. And came back with that song. Oh my god! And I, oh I don't know god. if it's true or not, oh, but I thought that's <laughs> kind of that's what got to be on it. Well, we have that song, and uh, uh, be we, great if we could roll that in. Yeah, we we released the record on October 11th. We uh -huh. played at Villains downtown, and and we we have a live um, video that we just put yeah, together. This, and I think this is this is another cup of coffee that we're going to see right now. There's a spark.
love that song. That's really it's fun, great. And, and it's it's kind of a I I don't know. I, I feel really honored to first of all know Scarlett because she's such an amazing person, and yeah. I this is the violin player. Yeah, and I met her, you know, quite a quite a few years ago. We lost touch, and then we connected in the last two albums she's played with us on several tr of the tracks. And then when she can, she joins us for special performances. And she tears it up like that. She's wonderful. <laughs> you also have a, 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 an instrumentalist, the guy who plays the accordion. Yeah, he's Cisco. Wonderful. And he really, that, that sound is really. Cisco de Luna, Cisco he's de Luna. insane. And he plays a lap steel. He plays a lap steel, yeah. too. Yeah. And accordion. I'm in musical heaven with people that I'm playing with right now. And this, you know, this, and this, 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 this <laughs> album, IDU, has um, all that stuff on it. And by the way, we want to mention that your website is? Um, uh, TawnyEllis.com. It's easy to remember. <laughs> and it'll be up on the screen, too. Uh, but you can order the album through that website as well? Um, yeah, there's uh, the iTunes icon there. You yeah. can just, you know, buy, the, buy it by the song, buy it by the album, however you want to take it. So, um, well, uh, uh, we have a few more minutes left. I just wanted to um, uh, talk a little bit about the other songs on this album because in mm. addition to coffee and, yeah. uh, and the problems with human relationships, uh, <laughs> you talk about whiskey as well. That's a great song. I, those are two of my favorite things, yeah. coffee and whiskey. So, <laughs> and, of course, heartbreak and love. And they're all good things to write songs about. And, the, and, and I, I think the nice thing about this album is not only... Does it have a, a lot of um, really intimate and, and, and subject matter about relationships and love and, and the little things in life like whiskey and coffee? But it is, it's also deeper instrumentally. I mean, technically, this seems to be a much more sophisticated album. Um, Thank you. And, yeah, um, I think so. What, what else has been added into this mix? That, that, uh, um, well... You know, we basically, everything is kind of strung on top of a, an acoustic performance, right, Gio? It's sort of like a, an acoustic performance with other things put on top of it, like overdubs of things. We've tried to keep it very simple. Um, like I said, you know, a lot of space. Um, we did, we had Scarlett come in. We had a cellist come in. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Viola come in. And so we would stack and do a string arrangement with right. him on upright bass, Scarlett on the violin, and Mindy, our friend Mindy, on the um, viola. So it would stack that way. And we do that on several things. But you know, I, I really think that when you create more space, it almost feels richer than to pile on so many, so many instruments. To me, it gets smaller. Right, right. Also, well, I, think, I think it was an interesting chain of events, the way this album came together and the production of an album, like when you talk about production, you know, it's like you can, you can approach it so many different ways and so many bands do and then you get producers that come in and approach things and instrumentation, arrangements, you know, everything, everything stylistically that happens, every decision you make about how a song comes together and Tawny had this really strong ally. She, she's been friends with Daniel Lanois for a while. And oh, Daniel Lanois wow. Produced, you know, Bob Dylan. He's, and, he's uh, my neighbor. <laughs> and Willie Nelson and Emmylou Harris and all these amazing, amazing artists. And you two. And um, he, we're in Silver Lake. He lives in Silver Lake. So they've created this rapport and this conversation over the couple of years before we recorded this album. And he gave her a lot of really good advice. And he wasn't really hands on in the studio. He kind of me. He kind of gave me the confidence to do what, in my heart, is what I really wanted to do. Good. And because. I get in a room with musicians, and um, it seems like everybody wants to bring. It it, it 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 changes. It depends on who you're working with. But in the past, I've had that problem of people wanting to really show what they have and do play more, a lot, more, and fill it up the space. Stuff. And so Tony and, would have like these. She had a few lists, and she was like, you know, I want to do this. I don't want to have that. You know, no big crazy loud guitar solos. Like specific things. Specific, it's like she says, sculptural ideas and sonic ideas. That He's a huge inspiration kind of in form. the production of it. And so, so, so she, she, get she said, you know, she was so close to the production of it that she basically just came on and, you know, I said, okay, you just if you're going to be this close to all the decisions we make and the instrumentation we use, then you're going to be a producer. And she basically came on as a co-producer, so we co-produced the album, and you know, kind of came up with this sound and worked through, you know, getting the, that sound. The album I had to make, and I kind of 
yeah. said to Gio, I, I don't want to bother with it unless it just has to be. So it was less know? less instruments, less. less players, you know, minimal overdubs, trying to really find that magic in the room, like being in the room and saying, did that work? Maybe listening back to a couple takes and say, that was great, but you know, it just doesn't really have the magic in the chorus yet. And, Trying to figure out. It's the not subtleties. a lot of cut and paste. There's it, these are all live performances. Yeah. So. Well, and, most, and, and you record all of these in France in, in, in live performance. Almost all of it. There's a couple songs that we did here, mm -hmm. and then a few overdubs that we did here. When when uh, 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 so when you left France or while you were still in France, did you have an idea of what the whole of this was? What the sort of <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew that it was going to be very simplistic um, and stripped down and very acoustic and very orchestral. I knew that. I knew the vein of the album because of the songs that were coming together and, and there, was, there was a link through. Yeah. It, had a certain, it had a certain feeling, like a certain darkness, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. A certain darkness and a certain feeling that I think we had there and being in these old stone structures right. and, and spending a lot of time there and drinking wine and just having the time to like absorb it and create it, I think there was definitely a feeling. You know, it's funny. Something <laughs> you just said struck me because I've seen this in like two or three reviews where you say it's, it's simple, you know, and yet orchestral. And, and in a way, those things sort of contradict themselves. But yeah. you've got to hear the album <laughs> to understand what but that means if you, because it's very clean. Because there's but a lot if, of strings, too. Yes, yes. It, but if you know me, that's the theme of my life. I'm, I'm, I am... Like the last album was Evolve or Die, you know? Yeah. It's like I to you. I, I love duality. I, maybe it's the Pisces in me or something, but I love to counterbalance. It's like we've got, I need to leave you and break up songs and, oh, you're, you know, the end of my life, love of my life. You know, I love the duality. And I think, I think in the duality is, is, is everybody's, they bring to the table what they get out of it. Mm -hmm. So there's room, and one of my favorite quotes was a guy who reviewed it said, there's room for me to crawl around inside of the songs and, and, and I can figure out what they mean to me. And I thought that was the biggest compliment ever. Yeah, and I think To be able to have that space to move into it. And I was thinking about this morning about, about your music in, 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 because it doesn't fit into a pigeonhole. It's not country. But country is a big part of that background. It's where you come from. But you sort of, you know, you 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 know, you touch the blues. You you know, you touch all kinds of things, and that's why I say it to to me, it's it's no more country than you know. Than, yeah. So, I mean, what do you think about where you're going? And well, I, I tell you what, I, I, we were talking about Daniel Anwar. I had a conversation with him, and he said to me, you know, don't try to fit into a category. He said, listen to artists like Frank Sinatra and, and um, yeah, um, Bob Marley and Bob Dylan. He said, be a classic artist. Yeah. You, you can do that. Be a classic artist. Write songs like that and, and have moods like that. So I kind of, I, I fell away from trying to be anything. And that was just that validation to, to do that. To, to, I think it gave to do a that. lot of confidence to have him. Mm -hmm. To bounce things off of, and him, just, even if it was small bits of advice, yeah. they were huge. Also, just know, seeing the way he works, and yeah. Well, um, gosh, this—I mean, I would love to go on, but we're actually <laughs> running out of time, and I think we're going to go out on uh, 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 another another uh, uh, piece or a uh, couple okay. of other pieces. But sure. it's so so great to see you. Thank you so Thank much for you. coming so by. Much, man. This is so much it. fun. Thanks for coming. Oh, no comments. problem, no problem. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be Having playing us. soon at Villain? Um, well, actually, the next play, uh, show will be at the Bootleg. At the Bootleg. What uh -huh. is that? Um, bootleg that's going to be November 13th, oh, cool. and it's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay. So. And I think the Come next down. video Have is uh, a song called She Stays. She Stays. OK. That's what we're going to look at now. And we just released this a couple weeks ago, okay. too. All right, check it out. She's always on the edge of leaving. One day she'll finally find the strength to leave him. She'd stay 
Oh. Mm-hmm.